from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, October 4th. Okay, so this moon in Libra is going to be going void, of course, at 6.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then we're locking into Scorpio energy at 7.23 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. So, of course, we're still in this new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. And as we kind of get going here, there is going to be a very faint line, an illumination in the sky of this new moon now growing, now intensifying and, of course, increasing in light. The more light that we observe in the sky, the more clarity is coming in, the more I'm going to say the confusion fog lifts. However, there still is a major, major blanket of confusion. So it's an interesting dynamic because shifting out of the Libra energy into the Scorpio energy is always an intense one. We're moving out of the light, fluffy, airy space of the head space and technically the heart space because we were trying to bring those particular scales into balance. And we do a deep dive into the darkness, into our desires, into our fears. That Scorpio energy is helping us to make the inner change, the inner transformation needed based off of the epiphanies, the aha moments that we've been illuminated to thus far in what needs to change, where it is that we need to adjust the scales in our lives, so to speak, in order to bring back the peace, the harmony, the balance. So that Scorpio energy is a fixed water sign. It means that we are going to stabilize in our emotional realm. We are going to gain a little bit of clarity, especially when we let our intuition take the lead. However, there are going to be some darker parts for us to realize and examine why we have them and how they're actually holding us back. At the end of the next couple of days, when the moon is complete in the Scorpio energy, we will have a very changed, very transformed inner realm, emotionally and intuitively speaking. So there are seven different aspects taking place here today. Ten of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon, while still in this Libra energy, is going to make a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is in Taurus energy. Venus rules over the Libra energy and the Taurus energy. And again, Venus is in Scorpio energy, a major pivot point, major change of heart, depending on, again, our emotions in Libra, where they're extreme, where they're tipping us in a particular direction and path. And Uranus, of course, retrograde in this Taurus energy is illuminating perspective, where it is that we're overly attached to the old, where it is that, again, we're having a hard time breaking out of the patterns, the habits of the old version of self. Now, this is a tough interaction, so this is going to illuminate anxiety and confusion, tipping that mental plane and those heart space scales into one path direction and then teeter totter back into that last extreme. Now we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in Libra energy. So again, we're trying to see all angles. We're trying to weigh the pros and cons. We're trying to see situations from a different set of eyes, if you will, but we're very uncertain. We're questioning. And even if we want to come to a decision, indecision reigns supreme. So Mercury is going to be making a very harsh interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. And you best believe that this is going to tip the scales all the way to an extreme in our mental plane. This is going to bring on a negative narrative. This is going to feel like we are having mental anxiety or a mental block, if you will. And we are going to really realize where it's hard for us to make a good informed decision, where it is that we're having a hard time making practical, logical, rational decisions, and where it is that, again, there's probably a mental breakdown or communication breakdown. And when I say mental breakdown, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to go cray cray, but it does mean that, again, we're banging our head against a wall trying to think of something, trying to come to a solution, come to a decision. And we just can't seem to get there again. Saturn restricts us. And with this mercurial energy, we're 
kind of being restricted from seeing the truth, from seeing the path forward, from seeing the solution. So it is definitely going to start kind of taking us down a path of fears, doubts, and insecurities. And again, picking ourselves apart and really just kind of leaning more into the pessimistic, more negative type of narrative. The moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in Pisces as well. And this is basically going to add to the emotional confusion now that we are experiencing due to, again, that mental blockage, if you will. We have the scales, if you will, kind of pushing against us at this particular point in time. And all we really want is clarity, is kind of peace, harmony, and we're not getting any of that. Instead, now we're really taking these negative perspectives, these negative narratives, these, I'm not going to say kind of pessimistic perspectives and points of view. We're taking it all the way to the point where, again, we're going to start talking fears, doubts, and insecurities into some of the things that we were pretty sure of, that we were pretty certain of. This is going to get overwhelming. Neptune, again, the escape artist, if you will, wants to run away from life, wants to run away from thought, wants to run away from those emotions and just kind of live in la-la land. This is a particular aspect because the moon is at the final degrees here in this Libra energy, and it's a critical crisis degree. We are really illuminated to where it is that the the scales of this moon in Libra is putting us in a very uncomfortable situation of our own making. Again, kind of worrying, focusing in on all the things that could go wrong, creating anxiety where there doesn't need to be any. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn. So again, now we're really in this negative mind space. We're really not feeling so good. We are kind of looking at some of the things that at one point we were happy to grow out of and move away from. And suddenly now we're looking at them like we don't want to let them go. We don't want to move on. We don't want to change. Again, reminder, the eclipse that we just had was a South Node in Libra event. The South Node is what we need to move away from. What we need to move away from is again, running back to the things that we work so hard to grow and heal and get away from because that is the default programming when things are shaky, unstable and uncertain. So right now we're having a lot of heaviness, a lot of weight, uh, the roles and responsibilities that we've uh, like made commitments to that's kind of overwhelming at this particular point in time. And we're kind of getting hard on ourselves, not really realizing that we have the power, we have the willpower within us to kind of shift our mental plane, shift our emotions. Now things are going to get really sticky here. 6:40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the last aspect that the moon in Libra is going to make and again at this 29th critical crisis karmic degree, the moon is getting into the boxing ring, squaring off, creating tension and conflict, illuminating the growing pain with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. Again, Libra energy, Capricorn energy, they don't typically get along. Air and Earth are the furthest elements away. Capricorn energy, very logical, practical, anchored into the present moment. Libra energy, kind of light and fluffy and focused on the positive and all of the good. We're having a hard time here. Again, the scales are definitely tipped against us at this particular juncture. But what this is going to do is kind of make us get sick of our own selves, our own mood, our own attitude, our own mental plane. We don't like feeling like this. And from that, an empowerment energy comes from Pluto, showing us where it is that we can boss up, take control back over our emotions, over our headspace, and definitely challenge the negative pessimistic perspective that we've been sitting in for the majority of the morning. So again, 641 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're shifting into that void, of course, when things get shaky, unstable and uncertain. This is kind of where we reach the breaking point, if you will. We lock into that Scorpio energy at 723 a.m. There's always a boss up energy with Scorpio anyways, because we kind of, I'm going to say, rise to the challenge like you know, we're not kind of whiny and cryy about it. We're like, okay, now it's time to like grow up, right? We give ourselves the best kind of tough love if that you could possibly get in order for us to boss up, to do better, to be better. So at 9.33 a.m., we have the sun 
in Libra energy, making a very awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of energy coming into our central nervous system through this Uranian energy. And because of that, this could bring on excitement. It could bring on nervousness. It could bring ants in your pants. Either way, the impulse, the urgency to want to take action, to want to make a move, to want to bust out of that funk, to want to bust out of some bad situations, we are definitely feeling that energy rise up in us. But here's the thing. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know what our intentions should be. We don't know how to take action and make moves. We, we know we want to. We just don't know what that is. Now, granted, this could bring on unexpected either events, so wild card energies that are just going to throw you for a loop. Good, bad, or otherwise. Just saying, could, you know, things could come out of the woodwork, so to speak, or there could be unexpected changes to plants that maybe you've already had. Either way, this is a testing energy, especially with our ability to keep ourselves calm. Okay, so our central nervous system popping off. This is a test in our patience. This is our, our test in our capabilities of managing our energy because our central nervous system is merely energy. We have to control it. We have to focus it. So all of this testing, if you will, is going to kind of illuminate where it is that maybe we have to kind of challenge that perspective. Maybe we need to kind of take a new approach to things. Maybe we have to kind of redefine what it is that we could be focusing our time, energy and efforts into, even though it's not the changes that we want to make, we could still be productive in the here and now. It just feels like there's going to be like some interesting cards thrown our way, some curveballs thrown at our way that are going to make for some uh, tough love life lessons and moments, especially with detours, like, whoop, we got to pivot, whoop, we got to pivot again. Okay, so again, we're still in this eclipse energy, we need to be patient with this particular process. Now at 1.04pm, so a little bit of time we sit in that particular energy, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money, she's already in the Scorpio energy, she is going to be trining, which is a beautiful interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy, this is water on water action, this is what gives us our trine, this is a growth, this is a healing, this is a nudge in the right direction. So what this is going to do, because Saturn is about structure, and because Venus is about like how we're feeling, and because we're in a deconstruction type of chapter in the Scorpio energy, because there has to be a death and destruction of the old in order for a resurrection, a rebirth, a renewal to take place. That's what transformation is at the you know basis of it. We have this particular energy helping us to sort out our feelings. Now, does that mean that everything's going to make sense right away? Probably not. However, it is going to, again, provide us with a little bit of a more logical and practical approach to how it is that we're thinking, how it is that we're feeling. We are starting to realize, again, what we actually need to be building in our lives to feel fit, safe and secure and happy. We are going to be challenged to take a different approach to our relationship dynamics, especially the ones popping off, and to our money matter situation. Because again, Venus being all about the love and money, we're going through a major pivotal point of recognizing new wants, needs and desires, and therefore having to close the door on old ones. At the end of the day, we are operating with a much more level head, especially when it comes to processing a lot of the emotions that have been triggered and activated through the last couple of days of building towards this new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. Again, the further we get away from this energy from this event, the clearer and calmer things are going to be. So this is definitely going to help us put things into a different perspective. But we just again, have this urgency kind of in the background for us to figure it out. And we don't really kind of gain all that clarity as fast as we would like. So at 346 p.m., this is going to be the first moon in Scorpio aspect. OK, so with the moon in Scorpio, like our emotions are deep, they are intense. We are probing, meaning we're asking ourselves the deep seated questions on why we feel the way that we feel, why we are the way that we are. If there is a particular, let's call it area that we want to explore, that we need to unearth some truths about, whether in ourselves or in the people, the world around us, 
we have the ability to put our detective hats on and use our intuition and our intellect in order to kind of get the details, the information that we currently feel that we're lacking. The moon is going to be making a harmonious aspect with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is water on water action, just a different aspect or different degrees away. Thus, there's a lot of intuition coming in. First of all, the water energy cleanses and purifies a lot of the energy, the heaviness, the weight that we were sitting in earlier in the day. Purifies, cleanses us from those heaviness, that weight in order for us to get in touch with the new emotions, the new intuitive insights that are currently being downloaded due to this particular aspect. They're already within us, but again, the eclipse energy has all of these details that we crave so deeply hidden away from our awareness. So this is going to help us reframe what it is that we're being called to do, what it is that we're being called to pursue. The moon is then going to make a awkward interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Jupiter is in Gemini energy. Gemini energy is, of course, the mental plane and information and communication. And Jupiter's trying to magnify that particular area of our lives, that particular area, I'm going to say of our information and knowledge that we're basing a lot of our decisions off of. But Jupiter is slowing down. He will be going retrograde here on the 9th. Listen to the October energy forecast if you haven't already. And of course, download your energy guide for the month. We have the moon and Jupiter kind of coming into an interaction to put into perspective the choices, the options, the opportunities that we currently have weighing for us and weighing against us. Again, that Gemini energy is very divisive. We are dealing with extremes. We are dealing with pivot points. We're dealing with crossroad issues. And one path, direction, option, opportunity is kind of playing it safe. Again, continuing to do what it is that we've been doing. Maybe we're improving on it. Maybe we're building on it, upon it, but we still know what we're going to get. Whereas the other option, the other path, the other direction is so extreme that would be pushing us into unforeign, well, foreign territory and uncharted waters, put it that way. And so we're really trying to get in touch with our intuition through the Scorpio energy, we're trying to get in touch with our intellect through the Gemini energy, and we're trying to use both in order to make an informed decision on where it is that we're intuitively being called, but where it intellectually makes sense for us to go. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Scorpio energy, making a very harsh interaction with that north node in Aries energy. And of course, that north node in Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us more independent, trying to get us to put our own wants, needs and desires at the top of the list and really start kind of fulfilling our own individual mission purpose, if you will. The moon interacting with the north node, of course, the north node is wanting us to think about the future. Right now, we have too many things to wrap up as far as the past goes. So emotionally speaking, Scorpio energy just wants us to deal with it, wants us to deal with it, process it, put it behind us so that we have space free and clear to bring something new to life. That North Node in Aries energy, again, there's too many options available to us in the futuristic realm. And again, we don't have enough clarity, we don't have enough, I'm going to say validation for us to actually choose said path. So emotionally speaking, we aren't going to allow ourselves to think too far into the future. We have a lot to deal with in our present moment, and we have a lot to unpack and put behind us as far as the past goes.